إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ونعوذ بالله تعالى من النار All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we send our salutations on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, In the very early days of Islam about five years after the uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received the message the situation was very difficult for the Muslims. They were uh, being oppressed. There was torture. There was even to the point of killing. And Rasulullah saw the situation of the Muslims that they were in. And he gave them permission to leave. He gave them permission to go somewhere else where you can practice your faith. And he pointed them to a place called Al Habasha. A place called Al Habasha, which is in present day Ethiopia. Somalia and he told them that go to this place because there is a king in this land No one is oppressed. No one is treated unfairly in his dominion And so Rasulullah allowed the companions who were able to to make this journey And so they went a group of about 15 uh, Companions the first time and then second group went later on which was a much higher number and they made what was the first hijrah in Islam the Hijrah to Al Habasha. Before there was the Hijrah to Al Medina, there was the Hijrah to Al Habasha. Uh, and so they went to this land and they settled in this land. And Quraysh, when they heard about this, they were not happy at all. And in fact, they were afraid. They were afraid what's going to happen to their reputation when people hear that a group from amongst them has left and has taken refuge in another land. They were also afraid. What happens if these people, they go and they form a base and they come back and they take revenge on us. So they were very scared and they were very afraid. And they decided that we're going to send emissaries to bring these Muslims back. Because for Quraysh, you cannot be Muslim in Mecca and you cannot be Muslim in outside of Mecca. We don't want Islam anywhere. We don't want Islam in Mecca and we don't want Islam outside of Mecca. And the choice for Quraysh, for the Muslims, was simple. You return back to our religion, and there's no other choice. And with that, Quraysh, they took uh, an extreme step, an even harsher step, or a harsher, harsher approach than the previous nations had taken, the previous disbelieving nations had taken towards their prophets. As Allah says, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِرُسُلِهِمْ لَنُخْرِجَنَّكُم مِّنْ أَرْضِنَا أَوْ لَتَعُودُنَّ فِي مِلَّتِنَا The previous nations, disbelieving nations, they would give a choice to uh, the prophets and the believers. They would say, either we will kick you out of this land or you will return back to our religion. So they would give them a choice. Well, we're going to kick you out. For Quraysh, there was no choice. There was, they didn't have this choice of being kicked out. You will stay here and you will not be allowed to practice your religion. So Quraysh sent emissaries to go and fetch and drag the Muslims back to Mecca. And they sent two emissaries one amongst them was a man by the name of Amr ibn al-As. Amr ibn al-As. Uh, he would later on become a Muslim, but at this point he was a disbeliever, a disbelieving pagan. Amr ibn al-As was a very intelligent person, and he had a gift of speaking. He had a very sweet tongue, and he was an expert in negotiations. And he had a very good relationship with the king of al-Habasha, known as al-Najashi. He had a very good prior relationship with, with him. So he went and he took some gifts uh, with him and he attempted to convince Al-Najashi to send the Muslims back. Send these Muslims back 
from where they came from. And one of the things that he said to an Najashi, he said that these Muslims, they've left our religion. They've left the religion of our forefathers. But they have not entered into your religion. So they're not with us and they're not with you. So he tried to put fear into an Najashi's heart to make him think that this group of Muslims is a threat. They didn't enter into your religion, but they left our religion and they didn't stay in the pond the religion of their forefathers. So who are they? What are they going to do? So they went to Najashi, but of course, Rasulullah made the prediction that this king, no one is treated unfairly in his dominion. And so he called them to the royal court and he asked them to explain their religion. What is this religion that you have come with? You have neither remained on the religion of your forefathers, nor have you entered into our religion. So what is this religion that you have come with? And their spokesperson stood up, and that was Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, the cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the brother of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And he stood up and very beautifully, very eloquently, in a few words, he explained the religion of Islam. And an Najashi heard these words, and he was moved by it and he was affected by it and he asked Ja'far do you have anything of the scripture that you have come with do you have anything of the scripture that you can recite so we can hear it and so Ja'far recited some verses from Surah Maryam and the tears started to flow from an Najashi's face as well as, well as the, the priests that were around them because even though they did not know of this book and they did not believe in it but the words were very powerful as he spoke about Maryam and as he spoke about Isa alayhi salam. And after this was done, an Najashi was convinced. These people are sincere in their belief and they will be allowed to stay. They will be allowed to stay in this land. And he sent Amr ibn As back along with his companion. But Amr ibn As was a very intelligent man and he was also a very determined individual. And he's not the type of person to just walk away without trying his utmost best to achieve his goal. And so, he, he, he diverted to plan B. Plan A didn't work. Plan A was to try to get uh, Najashi fearful of the Muslims and this new religion. It didn't work. So now he, ch he chose to go to a different path, which was plan B. So he went to An-Najashi and he said to An-Najashi, do you know that these Muslims, they say something very terrible about Isa alayhi salam. They say something very terrible about Isa alayhi salam. They say terrible, great things about Isa alayhi salam. So of course, an Najashi is a Christian, and the central figurehead in Christianity is Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, the son of Maryam. And so he became concerned. He wanted to know what is it that they're saying about Isa alayhi salam. How can I have people living in my land who are disrespectful to Isa alayhi salam? <clears throat> so he called them. He called them once again. And the Muslims were a bit uh, fearful. What did, they didn't know what they should say. When, if he asks us about Isa, what are we going to say? We don't want to offend him. But then they came to a decision that we're going to speak the truth. And we're going to describe Isa alayhi salam just as the Quran has described him. And as Rasulullah sallallahu has described him. And so they came and the question was asked, what do you say about Isa? What was these terrible things that Amr ibn As claimed that the Muslims said? What were the, these terrible things? Do they claim that he's a, an imposter? Do they claim that he's a fraud, a liar? A person, an evil person. Is this what the Muslims claim? No. The Muslims claim that he is Abdullahi wa Rasul. That he is the slave of Allah and he's the messenger of Allah. This is what the Muslims claim. And so they asked, or Najashi asked the Muslims, what do you say about Isa? And they answered exactly as has come in the Quran and has been taught to them by Rasulullah that he is Abdullah. He is the slave of Allah. He is Rasulullah. He is the messenger of Allah. He is Kalimatullah. He is the word of Allah because Allah created him by a word, kun. He is ruhullah. He is the spirit of Allah because Allah breathed into him from his spirit. Born from the Virgin Mary who uh, did not commit any type of indecency. This was Isa alayhi salam. And so an Najashi heard these words and he picked up a branch that he had. He picked up a branch. And he told the Muslims, what you believe about Isa and what I believe about Isa does not go beyond the length of this branch. Meaning, believe. The difference between what I believe about Isa and what you believe about Isa is the distance of this branch. Meaning, it's very similar. 
very similar to what we believe. And so he allowed them to stay. And he sent Amr ibn As back and he returned his gifts. Usually if somebody gives you gifts, you don't return it. It's a gift. But he was returned back the gifts and he was very angry and he told the Muslims, you are allowed to stay here. So this is Isa ibn Maryam, who we Muslims believe is a mighty messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The spirit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have Muslims, we are the only religion, major world religion besides Christianity, which believes in Isa alayhi salam and makes belief in him a central tenet of faith. There's no other major world religion besides Christianity which holds this belief of Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam is a person who's disputed. Who, what is his real identity? So we have the Christians on one hand who have exaggerated and raised him up to a level way beyond what he is. And then you have others such as the Jews who have rejected him and called him a liar and called him an imposter and have said terrible things about his mother. Islam comes with the middle way, with the way of truth. And it affirms that Isa alayhi salam is a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he is not divine and he's not God and he's not the son of God, but rather he is a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Islam comes and refutes the exaggerations of the Christians, but at the same time also refutes the lies of the Jews and those who rejected Isa alayhi salam. So we believe as, Mus as Muslims that Isa alayhi salam was born with a miraculous birth. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Isa alayhi salam without a father. Without a father. Without the inter intervention, intervention of a male. And he was born through miraculously uh, by, uh, by uh, his mother giving birth to him without having ever been married or having touched a man. On this point, the people have become divided. So for the Christians, they look at this and they say that Isa alayhi salam has not been created with a father. He has no father. So this must mean that his father is God. And he must be the son of God because if he has no father and he only has a mother, then who is his father? His father must be God. And so they claim he is the son of God. On the other hand, you have the Jews who say that well, if he has been created with no known father, and it is impossible to be created for a person to come into existence without a mother and a father, then this must mean that his mother committed adultery. And she conceived of Isa alayhi salam through illegitimate means, and he was born out of wedlock. Islam comes and affirms that Isa alayhi salam was born miraculously. He was born without a father. He was born by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Kun fayakun. But this does not indicate that he is divine. And it does not mean that he is God or he is the son of God. And in reality, the creation of Isa alayhi salam is very similar to the creation of Adam. As Allah says in the Quran, in the Isa Allahi kamathali Adam. That the similitude of Isa is like the similitude of Adam. In fact, Adam alayhi salam was born without a mother and he was born without a father. So if that makes him, if, if it makes, if Isa alayhi salam is divine because he was born without a father, then what do you say about Adam alayhi salam, who was born without a mother and he was born without a father? So Islam comes and affirms that yes, Isa alayhi salam was born miraculously through the, with, uh, through the Virgin Mary, but this is something easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is not any way, shape or form indicates that Isa alayhi salam is divine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Quran the news that came to Maryam alayhi salam when the angel Jibreel alayhi salam came and he gave her the glad tidings of a son. And she said, Anna yakunu li walad wa lam bashar. How can I have a son and no man has touched me? And the response was, this is, how, this is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he wills something, he will say, Kun, be, and it is. So we believe that Isa alayhi salam was born miraculously. We also believe that Isa alayhi salam was the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Meaning that Allah spoke the word Kun and he became into creation. And we believe that he is the spirit of Allah and he is the Masih, the Messiah. And all of these things are affirmed by the Christians, rejected by the Jews. We also believe that Isa alayhi salam, he came with miracles, came with many miracles. He would bring the dead back to life. He would heal the blind. He would cure the leper. But he would do all these things by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on this point, the people have once again differed. So the Christians, they came and they said, he is bringing the dead back to life. He is healing the blind. He is curing the leper. He must be divine. Only God can do these things. Only God can do these things. So he must be divine. He must be God or he must be the son of God. And on the other hand, the Jews, they see these miracles because Isa alayhi salam came these miracle, with these miracles. But instead, instead of acknowledging it, they claimed it to be sorcery and magic. When he came to them with clear signs, they said that this is clear and evident magic. Inshallah, if we, everyone can come up, we have a lot, a lot of people in the uh, building. So everybody come uh, move up as close as possible and make, us, make room, inshallah. <clears throat> so the Jews, they said that this is clear magic. The Christians, they said that this is a sign or a, a proof and evidence that he is divine, that he is God or he is the son of God. But Muslims, we believe that this is something easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah, Allah azza wa gave Isa alayhi salam these miracles but with everything that he came with, it was by the permission of Allah. وَرَسُولًا إِلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ أَنِّي قَدْ جِئْتُكُمْ بِآيَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ And a messenger to Bani Israel. I have come to you for, with signs, uh, with signs from your Lord. أَنِّي أَخْرُبُ لَكُمْ مِّنَ الطِّينِ كَهِيَةِ الطَّيْرِ فَأَنْفُخُ فِيهِ فَيَكُونُ طَيْرٌ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ one of the things that Isa would do is that he would bring birds in the shape of clay and then he would blow into it and it would become real birds. But he says, I did that, bi idhnillah. <clears throat> and I cure the blind and I heal the leper and I bring the dead back to life. But by the permission of Allah, bi idhnillah. And to this date, no modern medical advancement has even come close to what Isa alayhi salam did which is bringing the dead back to life they've come there's been a lot of medical advancements but they have not reached to the point where they can bring the dead back to life and they will never reach that point because this is a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is the Isa alayhi salam who came with these signs and miracles but it was by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we believe that Isa alayhi salam was sent to Bani Israel he was exclusively sent to Bani Israel and no one else besides Bani Israel. And on this point, the people have differed once again. The Christians, they claim that Isa alayhi salam was sent to Jews and Gentiles. Gentiles are the non-Jews, meaning he was sent to everybody. As, as far as the Jews go, they reject Isa alayhi salam. They claim he's a false messiah and a fraud and an imposter. But for Muslims, we believe that Isa alayhi salam was sent to Bani Israel specifically. And he was not sent to anybody else besides Bani Israel. وَرَسُولًا إِلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ Allah says in the Quran that a messenger to Bani Israel. And he was not sent to anybody else. We believe that Isa alayhi salam came and he affirmed the Torah. He affirmed the laws of the Torah. With some minor amendments. With some minor amendments and changes. But overall he upheld the law of the Torah. And on this point the people have differed once again. For the Christians they claim that Isa alayhi salam lifted the law and he got rid of the law of the Torah and there is no more law so you find that the Christians they do everything they drink alcohol and they eat pork and they commit fornication and they claim that none of these things matter and none of these things are obligatory on them and the law has no more relevance anymore so the Christians claim that Isa alayhi salam lifted the, the law and of course the Jews they reject Isa alayhi salam so they uphold the law of the Torah, all of it, even the strict parts of the law of the Torah. As Muslims, we believe that Isa alayhi salam came and he upheld the law of the Torah. He confirmed the Torah of Musa alayhi salam, but he also made some adjustments. And 
and a confirmation to what has come before me from the Torah and for me to make halal what has previously been, been haram. So Bani Israel, because of their transgressions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made certain things haram on them that were halal. Allah made certain things on them uh, haram even though it was previously halal because of their, trans because of their transgressions. And so Isa alayhi salam came and he lifted some of these restrictions. He lifted some of these very difficult laws upon Bani Israel. And he made light, he made the law lighter because of the, the, the new law that he came with. So we as Muslims believe that Isa alayhi salam, he came and he confirmed the law of the Torah, but he also lightened the law and he uh, removed some of the difficulties that were there. We as Muslims believe that Isa alayhi salam was neither killed nor was he crucified. And on this point, the people, besides Muslims, do not differ. The people do not differ. The Jews, the Christians, and even the historians, they all consider this to be a historical fact. They consider this to be a historical fact, undisputed fact that Isa alayhi salam was crucified. Both the Christians and the Jews believe this. For the Christians, they believe that he was killed and crucified on the cross. For the Jews, they also believe this. They believe that they're the ones who killed him. And they claim that they killed the, the, the Messiah, Isa ibn Maryam, the Messenger of Allah. So they are in agreement regarding the crucifixion of Isa alayhi salam. And even the historians, modern day historians, they believe that this is a historical fact. And this is something that everyone had acknowledged until the Qur'an came and presented a completely different narrative. And perhaps there were Christian groups who held the correct belief, but as we know that they were true Christians, but they died out and they were slowly exterminated. And so mainstream Christianity, as well as the entire world, became, uh, they, they were on the belief that Isa alayhi salam was crucified until the Qur'an came. And the Qur'an presented a completely different narrative. And the Qur'an firmly denies that Isa alayhi salam is killed. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ Firmly denies that he was killed and firmly denies that he was crucified. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ But it was made to appear that to them. It was made to appear that he was crucified. But he was not crucified and he was not killed. And everyone who is differing on it, they are in conjecture. And they are only following conjecture. So the Muslims and the Quran came with a different narrative and explained that Isa alayhi salam was neither killed nor was he crucified, but rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up. Rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up. And this is a proof that the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it is inconceivable for a human being to come and make such bold claims with, about something which was considered to be a fact, a historical fact. Nobody doubted before the Qur'an came that Isa alayhi salam was crucified until the Qur'an came and completely and firmly refuted this idea. So this is the belief of Muslims of Isa alayhi salam. ذَلِكَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمْ As the Qur'an says, قَوْلَ الْحَقِّ A statement of truth الَّذِي فِيهِ يَمْتَرُونَ upon which they are in disagreement. This is the true Isa alayhi salam. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Because of the enormous claims against Isa alayhi salam, the claim that he is God, the claim that he is the Son of God, the claim that he is divine, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow Isa alayhi salam to refute these claims and to clear his name twice. Not once, but twice. In this world and then in the next. In this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send Isa alayhi salam back. And he is from the signs of the hour. That he is from the knowledge of the hour. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send Isa alayhi salam back. And he will come to refute the claims that have been made against him. The claims that he is divine. 
or the claims that he's been killed. He will come and refute both the Christians in their exaggerations against him and the Jews who claim that they killed him and crucified him. So he will come and refute these claims. Rasulullah says in hadith, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ لَا يُشِكَنَّ أَنْ يَنْزِلَ فِيكُمْ إِبْنُ مَرْيَمْ حَكَمًا عَذًّا فَيَكْسِرُ الصَّلِيبِ وَيَقْتُلُ الْخَنْزِيرُ وَيَقْتُلُ الْخَنْزِيرُ وَيَضَعَ الْجِزْيَةِ That by the one whose hand is my soul, Isa ibn Maryam will soon descend and he will be a just ruler and he will break the cross and he will kill the pig and he will lift the jizya and no other religion will be accepted except for the religion that Isa alayhi salam comes with and no Jew or Christian will be around at that time except they will believe in him Allah says in the Quran that there is no one from the people of the kitab except that they will believe in him believe in Isa alayhi salam before he dies before Isa alayhi salam dies and so he will come and he will expose the truth and he will declare who he really is the true Isa alayhi salam he was neither killed nor crucified nor is he divine nor is he God or the son of God this is in this life and in the next life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow Isa alayhi salam to once again refute these claims it will be said to Isa alayhi salam on the day of judgment إِذْ قَالُوا اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمْ أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّيَ إِلَهَيْنِ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to Isa alayhi salam, O oh Isa, and the, the day of judgment will be a day of complete justice. Even though Isa alayhi salam is innocent of all of the claims that have been made against him, nonetheless Allah will establish justice, justice on that day. And he will allow those who made the claim to present their claim. And he will ask Isa about these claims. So he will say to Isa alayhi salam, Did you say to the people to take, me, to take yourself and your mother as gods besides Allah? قَالَ سُبْحَانَكْ مَا يَكُونُ لِي أَنْ أَقُولَ مَا لَيْسَ لِي بِحَقِّ Isa alayhi salam will say, Glory be to you, O Allah. How can I say that which I do not have any right to say? إِنْ كُنْتُ قُلْتُهُ فَقَدْ عَلِمْتَ If I said it, then you would have known that I said it. تَعْلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِي وَلَا أَعْلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِكِ You know what is in my soul, and I do not know what is in your self. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ عَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبِ You are the alam al the knower of the unseen. Ma qultu lahum illa amartani bihi. I did not say to them except what you commanded me to say. Ani'budullaha rabbi wa rabbakum. To worship your Lord, worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. Wa kuntu alayhim shaheeda ma dumtu fihim. And I was a witness amongst them as long as I was there with them. Falamma tawafaytani kunta anta raqiba alayhim. But when you took my soul, then you were the witness over them. وَأَنْتَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٍ إِن تُعَذِّبْهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ عِبَادُكَ If you choose to punish them, then they are your slaves. وَإِن تَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ But if you do not punish them, and if you have mercy on them and forgive them, then you are the Almighty, the All-Wise. So this is the true Isa alayhi salam between those who exaggerate regarding him and those who reject him. Isa alayhi salam, thalika Isa ibn Maryam, qawl al-haq al-ladhi fihi yamtarun. That is Isa ibn Maryam, the statement of truth concerning that which they differed on. Ma kana lillahi an yattakhida min walad. It is not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take a son, subhanahu, idha qada amran fa inna ma yaqoolu lahu kun fa yakoon. Wa inna allaha rabbi wa rabbukum fa'budu. And indeed Allah is your Lord and he is our Lord. He is my Lord and he is your Lord. هذا صراط مستقيم. This is Isa alayhi salam saying this. That this is the straight path. فاختلف الأحزاب من بينهم. But the people differed and they became groups differing on Isa alayhi salam. فويل للذين كفروا من من مشهد يوم عظيم. So woe to those who disbelieve on a day that will be very enormous and great. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to guide us and continue to guide us. And show us the truth as truth and allow us to follow it. And show us evil as evil and falsehood as falsehood and allow us to stay away from it. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ وَتُبَ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارَ رَبَّنَا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَكَفِرْ عَنَّا سَيِّئَاتِنَا وَتَوَفَّنَا مَعَ الْأَبْرَارِ اللَّهُمَّ اغْفِرُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ الْأَحْيَاءِ مِنْهُمْ وَالْأَمْوَاتِ اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين 
Allahumma shfi mardana wa marda al-muslimin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, give help to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. The situation still continues as it has been. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them relief, to allow them to be given ease after the period of difficulty. And we encourage the Muslims to continue to do what they are able to do of sending aid and boycotts and all these things are working bi-idhnillahi ta'ala to continue to do what you're able to do to alleviate and help your brothers and sisters in need. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well to alleviate the hardships of all the Muslims that are suffering in different parts of the world, in Yemen, in Sudan, in Syria, and all the other parts of the world. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ وَتُبَعْ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفافة والغنى اللهم صلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون